This is my working Lego claw machine, which I made with the use of only three Lego EV3 motors. That way, it's easier for you guys to build once I've released the full tutorial in my next video. The machine is locked until you insert a quarter. All other coins, including pennies, nickels, and dimes, are rejected. So, now, if we take a quarter and insert it into the slot, the red light turns green, and now we can play. The player can use these four buttons, which are around the center button, to move the claw. And, once they position it over the prize they're going for, they can press that center button to drop it. While it goes down, the claw opens, which are both controlled with just one motor. Now that it's over the prize, it then goes up and closes, but unfortunately I didn't win this time. Now, the claw is automatically going to recenter itself over the prize chute, and then, once it's there, it's going to go down just a little bit, so that way the claw can open and it would drop your prize if you won. After that loss, let's try again. Upon inserting another quarter, those red lights turn green, so we're good to go. Now I can maneuver that claw again over the prize I'm going for, but this time let's go for that blue bracelet in the back. So once I have it over there, I can press that center button again to drop that claw. And I got it. So now it's going to pick up that bracelet all the way to the tippy top and then it's going to recenter over the prize chute again. Now the claw is going to move over and go down just a bit to release my prize. There we go. So now let's take a look behind the scenes. When you insert a quarter into the machine, it rides on top of those two rails and under that color sensor. If you insert a coin less of a value, it's not large enough to be able to stick on both of those rails and instead falls in between and into that gap out of the machine. Each set of buttons controls a motor. The left and right ones control this motor, and then the forwards and backwards ones control the other motor. When you press that center button, it activates the third motor, which is in charge of lowering and opening the claw. The motor is directly connected to that yellow wheel that's spinning and then it eventually makes contact with the other wheel and then that makes contact with the next wheel. The yellow one's directly connected to the first spool and then the one on the other side is directly connected to the other spool. What this does is add a delay between when the first string is pulled compared to the second string and we can see how they're now connected to the claw. So the claw mechanism is quite simple. If I rotate this gear it spins this first spool, but not that second spool, until these pieces make contact, and then it would start trying to spin that spool. Here we can see that this string is connected to the top of the claw, which connects down here, and this string is connected here, which is on the part that can move up and down. When this moves up and down, it opens and closes the claw. So, all it's doing here is adjusting which string has the weight of the claw. When I put the weight of the claw on this string, it's open. And when I put the weight of the claw on this string, it pulls that up and it closes. So if we look at this one more time, we can see here that that string is pulled tight and this one is loose because the weight of the claw is up here on this. And then when I rotate it the other way, we can see that this string's tight and this one's loose because all the weight is on this piece, which clamps the claw closed. Another thing to point out is that we have tires here to weigh this down so we can open. And then inside here, if I remove this piece and then separate these panels, you can see that it's filled up with coins as weight. So that way, all that weight acts to close that claw. Back at the claw machine, I unfortunately did not win this time, but let's take a quick look here at how those spools go the other way so that way it can pick up and close. It basically just does everything in reverse. That smaller gear there has a friction pin, so that way that second spool can't spin freely, it has to wait until it gets spun. With all that wrapped up, I can now mention that in my next video, I'll have a full complete tutorial on how to build the machine, how to use it, how to program it, and everything in between. A easy to follow step-by-step -step tutorial so be sure to subscribe so that way you don't miss the video.